Walesco D3 is an inexpensive entry-level model steam engine. It's easy to set up, inexpensive to run, and has power enough to drive any of the Walesco accessories. Let's take a quick look at lubrication. Before each run, you need to oil all moving parts, paying special attention to the steam piston. Oil the flywheel crank where it connects to the firehouse, the support, and the piston. Rotate the flywheel to expose the piston and oil it liberally. Rotating the flywheel to work the piston in and out, spreading the oil into the cylinder. Oil the steam cylinder where it connects to the main support and oil the pivot pin for the steam cylinder. With lubrication complete, we're ready to fuel the engine and run it. All right. For running, I'm going to remove the stack. It's kind of um, cute for show, but it really doesn't really add anything to the operation of the engine. Something else I'm doing with this engine is it spits a lot of um, uh, a water and steam out from around the cylinder, and the vent port on the right-hand side here vents a lot of moisture, so you get a lot of water collecting around the base of the cylinder. Um, I just take a piece of paper towel, cut it into a rectangle, and slip it under there and I use that to soak up the water so it doesn't puddle. It makes it very easy to clean up and um, much needed to operate. I've got distilled water here in this measuring cup that I've preheated for a few seconds in the microwave, uh, about 20, 20 seconds. When filling the boiler, the sight glasses are very small and difficult to see through but when you add the, the warm water to it, the sight glasses will steam up. And then it's very easy to see the water level because as the water rises above or into the sight glass, it'll get clear. So you have 50 milliliters and what you want to do is make sure that the bottom sight glass is completely covered and then the water level rises to the top sight glass, somewhere to the middle or top of the top sight glass. A little bit more. A little more. Now every time you operate this, you want to make sure that the water's been topped up, off so that it shows up in the top sight glass. You don't want to run the motor dry. If you do, the boiler gets too hot and the solder joints will come apart. All right, there we are, 50 milliliters all the way to the top sight glass. It's half full in the top sight glass. Take the little pressure gauge they've provided. If it gets too hot and generates too much pressure, that relieves the pressure. Make sure it's sliding okay. And we take the ESPIT fuel, solid fuel. For this motor, it's a single brick of fuel, just a single little brick like that. Runtime will be seven to eight minutes for the fuel. And after seven to eight minutes of running, you'll lose about 10 milliliters of water in the, in the uh, cylinder, in the boiler. So you wanna top it off. If you're gonna run it multiple times, you wanna top it off between each running, adding 10 milliliters of water. All right, our fuel is started. Place it in the boiler. And we'll let that sit for a minute or two, a few minutes to heat up. As it starts to heat, it'll push water from the boiler through this line. So once the steam builds up pressure, there'll be water filling this line. You'll need to hand run this a few times and it will spit a lot of water out, clearing the line. Once the water spits out and steam starts flowing through that line, the uh, cylinder will be able to kick over and start operating on its own. So we'll go ahead and let that build up pressure. And you'll be able to hear it boiling. When you look through your sight glasses, the lower one or the upper one, you'll see bubbles start to form and bubble up. Uh, when it really gets boiling hard, you'll see the top sight glass, the, the, the bubbling uh, water in that tight sight glass. 
while it's running, there's a little bit of a, um, there's an option or a speed control. The side of the boilerplate has holes in it. You can see along the side here. These holes line up with vent holes inside of the uh, firebox. When it's pushed all the way in, it gets maximum airflow and the fuel will burn the hottest. You can pull it out slightly and it's just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, and that shuts down the holes a little bit which reduces the water or the uh, airflow. So it burns a little bit cooler. You can use that to control the speed of the motor. It's not a lot of control, but you can slow it down a little bit by pulling it out just a little bit and holding it there and you can speed the motor up by pushing it all the way in. Now on this motor the cylinders design is um, it's a very inexpensive design. It was done to make the motor um, affordable. The cylinder sits outside this block. Steam is pushed in from the side and this joint where the cylinder slides up and down will leak water and steam. Um, if you crank down this spring hard enough so that it doesn't leak, you create too much friction for the motor to run. So in a normal operating, operating condition, you will get leakage here. So at least see a little steam and a little bit of water bubbling out there when it's running and that's normal. So let's see. You can see the cylinder bubbling a little bit. Now I can hear the boiler boiling, so it should be about ready to run. You can see the steam start to boil out the little vent hole here. So let's go ahead and prime it a couple times, get the water, see it spitting the water out. You see I put this down on a towel here, that towel is to uh, just soak up some of the excess steam and moisture that this engine spits out. All right, it's clear. A little more steam buildup. All right, there we go. See the water dripping out of the exhaust port, being caught by the paper towel. And we can slow it down a little bit by pulling the firebox out slightly. You can actually see the water level is about a little more than halfway up in that uh, top sight glass.
The motor is actually a nice, uh, nice running little kit. Very inexpensive, seventy to eighty dollars out on the internet. Um, not as fancy or as nice running as the uh, more expensive units, but those are costing three or four times as much. So as an entry level steam engine, it's um, a nice little purchase. It runs well. It has a takeoff uh, on the pulley here on the main flywheel for running any of their toys. Uh, you can see other videos on the internet. Um, it has plenty of power to run all the other little attachments. Now when it gets, uh, there'll be a little bit of fuel left in here, you want to let the fuel burn out. And then while it's still hot, make sure you remove this and set it aside to cool. If you leave it in there, a little bit of the uh, moisture and liquid from the fuel tabs um, will solidify and uh, kind of glue it in place. It'll make it hard to get the, um, the firebox out. So you let that burn out for a couple minutes here and then remove it. So once we ensure that there's no more pressure, Remove the pressure relief, relief valve, set that aside, let the water cool. You want to remove the water, if you're going to run it again right now, just add 10 milliliters of water to bring the water up to the middle of the middle or the top of the top sight glass. Um, if you're done running it, you want to make sure you dry everything off and empty the water out of the cylinder. And that's it. Thank you for watching.